Hi again then guys and welcome to the 45th episode of Weekend Warriors, the review series for the very broad category of sports cars on Gran Turismo. There is a very, very broad selection of vehicles under that banner, some you could also categorise even under other categories. Some could be borderline hatchbacks, others could be borderline JDM cars, and this particular vehicle I would say definitely is a JDM car, the Japanese domestic market, it's a performance car within that category, and you could justifiably say, why isn't this car in Import Nights rather than Weekend Warriors? And the answer to that question is, there's no particular reason. I could have just as easily fitted this car into Import Nights as I could in here, in a very similar way to how I could have easily put any other K car in the B-Road Ballers hatchback series in the JDM series as well, because technically they are JDM cars. The reason why I've opted to put this car in Weekend Warriors though is because it's a perfect example of what Japan offers from a small, affordable, kind of oddball to some degree sports car. You could definitely feature it in the other series as well, in Import Nights, but for the moment I don't really feature cars in multiple series unless they absolutely have to be. So with that kind of semantic point out of the way, what can you actually expect from this car, the Mazda AutoZam AZ-1? It's a full premium, you've got some interesting visual upgrades which you can do to the car, some of which we actually covered in my countdown of the 20 cars with the best visual upgrades on Gran Turismo. And this is a car which definitely has a strong fan club. In fact, a lot of the small K cars more so the sports cars within the K-Car category, do have very strong followings. Stuff like the Suzuki Cappuccino, the Honda Beat, this car, the AZ-1. This one, though, is a bit more exotic, I would say, than stuff like the Cappuccino or the Beat. Now, personally, I do like those cars, although I'd probably never fit in one. The AZ-1, on the other hand, has much more of, I would say, kind of a niche feel. It deliberately tries to be a bit more oddball, more eye-catching, whereas stuff like the Cappuccino or the Beat, they are, to some degree at least, more traditional small sports cars. Two doors, two seats, rag top, very nose-heavy design in the case of the Cappuccino, and a very clearly mid-engine, relatively simple-looking layout in the case of the Beat. This car, on the other hand, has much more of a race-inspired look to it. It's got the gullwing doors, two-tone colours, a very open glass canopy, and it looks pretty cool, I would say. It's not necessarily a car that I think I would actually buy if I had the opportunity, because quite simply there are other cars for less money that I would rather own, but I can totally understand why someone would want an AZ-1. It is certainly a very appealing little car. Especially in the K-Car class, K-Cars don't get the respect that they deserve from the vast majority of people who play racing games. On Gran Turismo, K-Cars are represented, I would say, very well. In fact, I would say that the Gran Turismo franchise as a whole has done a better job of representing the K-Car market than any other game has, at least any other racing game that I've seen. They're presented as being interesting, cheap, very easy to drive, and potentially much quicker than you'd think they would be. And this is a perfect example of that, because the AZ-1 only has a 657cc engine, so around the same as a sports motorbike, for instance. That's not unusual for a K car, they do commonly have very, very small engines. And from that turbocharged, mid-mounted engine, you're looking at 171 horsepower. That's pretty strong. In fact, that is similar power levels, in fact, to some sport bikes. You are, though, also looking at 146 pound-feet of torque, and that is significantly higher than it would be in a similar size and power engine from a motorbike. And, of course, that's because a car needs more torque, whereas a motorbike, generally speaking, doesn't. Now, the weight on this car is very low. It is rear-wheel drive, which is pretty cool. Many K cars, the hatchback ones especially, tend to be front-wheel drive, for obvious reasons. That would have hindered this car. It is a good thing, I would say, that it is rear-wheel drive. It makes it more fun, it makes it more useful, because you can use it easily as a drift car. And also, rear-engine cars, generally speaking, make the best track cars. There are notable exceptions, obviously, but generally, 
a rear wheel drive car does have a pretty good chance of being quicker than an all wheel drive or front wheel drive car given the same specs on all three vehicles. Now the horsepower per ton isn't ridiculously high, it's not bad though, 267 horsepower per ton is pretty good for a small sports car and considering that the price on this car is not even 15 grand to begin with, for a full premium, that really is good value. Or at least it looks to be, because what looks to be good value doesn't necessarily always turn out that way, so the real question is, can it turn that low price, premium spec, good visual upgrades and decent enough numbers into actual usable ability? Or is it one of those cars which has a ridiculously high PP just because it's lightweight and doesn't really have that much use? Such as, unfortunately, stuff like the Mini Marcos. A fantastic car, fun to drive, a cheap, affordable classic, but unfortunately the PP level on the Mini Marcos for its given power is ridiculously high and it just can't compete on most tracks at that level. So does the AZ1 suffer from that? Well, actually, no it doesn't because the PP level on this car is quite low. 470 is not bad at all. Now for the numbers, that's not amazing. It does have quite a high PP level for a car with less than 200 horsepower, but it's not hard to see why. It's small, mid-engine rear-wheel drive, light, and has enough power and torque to get the job done. So the PP level is reasonable, I would say. Certainly justified, it could have easily been much higher than that, and you definitely wouldn't want it to be much higher than that. So that being said, what's it capable of? Can it win races? Is it good for seasonals? That kind of thing. Is this the next Suzuki GSX-R4? Well, to some degree, kind of, yeah. It's not a vehicle which is necessarily the most beginner-friendly. The handling can be twitchy, especially in fully tuned form, peak power especially, but with the right tuning, it can be not surprisingly fantastic around tight twisty circuits and the fact that it is a little bit better for top end performance than some other K cars means that against other K cars specifically it's a very strong performer but even beyond that under the right circumstances it can outrun and win against cars with a lot more power so although it's not the kind of vehicle which is going to beat everything it certainly does have its uses and it's worth checking out but that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.